Wheel of Time fanatics. Over the past month or so, we've gotten some pretty steady show news from the Wheel of Time on Prime, after a pretty slow period for a while there. And I've commented here and there on some of those rumors and castings, and I did one casting video, but I wanted to bring together everything that we've learned recently and use that to continue my speculation on what we're going to see in season one of the TV show. There's a surprising lot that we can interpret from this information, and I wanted to do a sort of update to a previous video I did where I speculated on how much of the books we might see in season one. Real quick spoiler warning here before we go any further. As in my previous video, this one may potentially include spoilers for The Eye of the World, The Great Hunt, and New Spring, but I will avoid going into any material beyond that. In that previous video, I laid out two possible scenarios, one in which The Eye of the World and The Great Hunt would be covered entirely, and the other in which The Eye of the World and New Spring would be covered, but little to none of The Great Hunt. At the time, with the information we had, I felt like the second scenario was more likely. And now that we have even more information, I feel that way even more strongly. I do think that very little or maybe even none of The Great Hunt will make it into season one, and that instead we'll get pretty extensive flashbacks both from New Spring but also other time periods, as well as one or more expanded storylines. Now, let me lay out all this recent information we have and why I think it points so strongly in one direction. First, we have official casting announcements for several minor Emmonsfield characters. So we have Christopher Sayeriff as Abel Cawthon, Juliet Howland as Natty Cawthon, David Stern as Senbui, Lolita Chakrabarti as Marin Alvier, Michael Tuahin as Bran Alvier, and Mandy Simons as Days Conger. Most of these had been rumored previously, and so I don't think this adds too much to our speculation. Though I will say, it is possible that we could cut back to Emmons Field after our main group leaves, and so it's possible that these characters could appear past the first episode. A slower paced season would potentially allow for this. Next, the show officially confirmed reporting that Abdul Salis would be playing Eamon Valda, and told us that Stuart Graham will be playing Jeff from Bornhold. And I get to say, ha, I knew it, because when we found out he was going to be in the show, I totally called it that he would be playing Jeff from Bornhold. In a similar way, I don't find this information to be terribly revealing. We knew there would be white cloaks in season one. And of course, Eamon Valda does not appear this early in the books. And it's possible that he could be replacing one or more other White Cloak characters, but not necessarily. There's a lot of different ways they could use Valda. And it could be that some of the other major White Cloak characters that we might expect, like Jarrett Byer or Dane Bornhald or even Pedro Nile, are still going to be forthcoming and that those characters are not going to be cut or replaced. Now, the timing of the announcement of these characters might suggest that we would first meet them when our group is in Berlon, but even that is just a guess. Next, we got a bunch of casting rumors courtesy of Redanian Intelligence, and as most of these have already actually been confirmed, I tend to think they're all fairly accurate. I am going to cover the confirmed ones first. We previously knew that Pasha Bokhari had been cast, and we now know that he will be playing Master Grinwell, and that Jennifer Preston has been cast as his wife, Mistress Grinwell. In the books, Rand and Matt stop on their farm on the Camelin Road very briefly. They're kind to them, and their daughter Els notably flirts with Rand. The fact that we will be seeing the Grinwells, to me, suggests they're probably cutting a lot less from book one than I think some people suspected. These are very minor characters who could have easily been cut. I do think that Master Grinwell, at least, will probably become a sort of amalgam character of all the farmers that help Rand and Matt along the road, so we don't have so many of them. And so we'll probably see him both on his farm and again later further down the Camelot Road. Now, we didn't get an announcement for an Els Grinwell, and that's a bit surprising. It leads me to suspect that we won't be seeing a character with that name in the show. 
Now, else is probably the most noteworthy thing about the Grinwells in the books. And so it is, again, surprising to potentially cut her and keep her parents. And that leads me to think that we might see her as part of another amalgam character, which brings me to the next confirmed character. At the same time as the show announced the casting of the Grinwells, they also told us that Zuka Hoyle, a Scottish actress, singer, and dancer, had been cast in a role they called Dana. They did not give her the last name Grinwell, so I don't think they just changed the name of the Grinwell's daughter, but they did say that she was found on the Camelon Road, same as the Grinwell's, and we know nothing else about this character, but I did mention her musical theater background because I think it might be relevant in speculating about what kind of role she will play in the show. The name is another curious choice because it is so similar to a character in The Great Hunt, Dina who is Tom's girlfriend and apprentice ever so briefly. In fact, Redanian intelligence thought that Dana was a typo and that this character actually would be Dina. But no, she is officially Dana. Now, I don't see any reason for such a slight name change from Dina to Dana if this was the exact same character with the exact same plot. And I definitely don't think we're going to be getting both a Dana and a Dina later on. But Dana could be a similar character, and that might be why they went with a small name change. My speculation is that she will be a performer at an inn and flirt with Rand, and then be inspired and pulled by his Tavira nature to leave her small town life and go to a big city. This puts her in very much the same role that Els fills in the books, and so she's sort of taking over that. If we then see her again in Kyrian or another big city, and she is by then apprentice and lover to Tom, she's filling the Dina role as well and becomes an amalgam character. And maybe she doesn't even die as Dina does and then goes on to fill other roles as well. I do think the show is going to have to have amalgam characters like this just to reduce the amount of casting that they have to do. We also have confirmation of Darren Clark as Basil Gill, the innkeeper at the Queen's Blessing in Camelin. But this doesn't add much to the speculation, besides ruling out the notion, which I never actually considered, that they might skip Camelin in season one. To me, the most intriguing casting rumor that came from Redanian intelligence was that a young Kira Chansa has been cast in the role of Swan Sanche. Now, obviously, this is not the only actress who will be playing Swan. I don't know this actress's exact age, but clearly she is a child. If you saw my previous season one speculation video, you'll know that I think there's good evidence for flashbacks from the new spring era making it into season one. And I would expect to see Swan in those flashbacks, whether or not she is incorporated into the main timeline of the show yet. But this actress is really too young, even for that time period. This casting has so far not been officially announced, but it was reported along with three others who have been. And so I trust this one. Now, the age of this actress suggests that she is at most a novice in the White Tower if they're aging down the novices somewhat. Otherwise, we're talking a pre-White Tower swan. Either way, we're looking at a time frame other than New Spring, which was about 20 years prior to the main timeline. So we now have good evidence for flashbacks from at least two different time periods. We have no idea how extensive those flashbacks might be, but the fact that they're casting for them at all is interesting. These are not obligatory scenes that anyone would be assuming we would get. And so they're going out of their way to show something through flashbacks, and that may well require something more substantial. The final casting rumor from Redanian Intelligence, still not confirmed, is that the actor Phil Snowden will be playing a character named Steve. That's right, Steve. Now, the idea that a character would actually be called Steve in this world being very hard to believe. This led to wild speculation, and honestly, 
no end of fun in the fandom trying to figure out, is this a code name for something? Speculation for who Steve could be was all over the map. And the memes. Oh, the memes. They pretty much just make themselves, don't they? Honestly, as much fun as it was to joke and speculate about Steve, there's a very good chance that he's a very minor character, maybe one who we never even hear his name on screen. There really hasn't been a situation where we've had a character rumored under one name and then later confirmed to have a different name. Now we do know that they do use fake names for audition scripts, such as Nady for Nynaeve, and it could be one of those. We also have an actress who was at the first table read, and she's rumored to be playing a character called Danya. We've never gotten any confirmation of that. Now I also think it's pretty unlikely we're going to have both a Danya and a Dana, so probably her name won't really be Danya in the show either. Maybe Danya and Steve are the same, both sort of fake audition names. Either way, I don't think Steve can add much to our speculation here because there's just nothing firm to go on for him yet. Now we come to what I think is the most compelling evidence for a slower paced season one, and that is the casting announcements for three of the Tuatha'an, Maria Doyle Kennedy as Ela. Daryl McCormack as Aram, and Narinder Samra as Rain. We already knew two of these actors, but not who they were playing. Both Daryl McCormack and Maria Doyle Kennedy were seen at the table read for episodes five and six. So if we just think for a moment about the fact that we now know we have Tinkers at least in episode five, I think we can now definitively rule out the neat four episodes for book one, and then four episodes for book two structure that had been theorized. We're still smack in the middle of book one material in episode five, at least. And just a reminder, there are no tinkers, and these three characters specifically do not appear in the Great Hunt at all. So the idea that by episode five, we're just diving into a straight adaptation of the Great Hunt just doesn't fit. We also have previous reporting in Variety that Daryl McCormack would appear in three episodes in the first season. If that's true, I think that would probably include Rain and Ela as well. And if we assume that's true, and we put those episodes as early as possible in the timeline, I think that would give us an introduction to the Tinkers in episode three, having Perrin and Egwene with them for all of episode four, and then a farewell to them in episode five. Even that is more material than I would have expected for these characters, which if they had been doing a faster paced outline, I think they could have gotten away with cutting from season one. There are other possibilities for how this could play out besides just sticking exactly to the book material. Maybe we see the Tuatha'an before Perrin and Egwene meet with them. We might see them getting a message from an Aiel, which they pass on. Maybe we see more of them after Perrin and Egwene leave, although there's less to go on there for what is happening to them at that point. One thing I do hope is that they're not in a rush to get to some of the later material with these characters, because that's something that I think we really want to work on and develop towards and not rush to do. But just the fact that we have Tinkers in the second half of the season, to me, really confirms a slower pace for the season. And it makes me question whether we are going to get to the Great Hunt material at all. Now, we do know we get as far as Faldara. And it is possible that they could have shifted some of the early Faldara stuff from the Great Hunt to before Tarwin's Gap. But I feel pretty confident that Tarwin's Gap and the Eye of the World are going to be the climax of season one, and that we're going to see all of those flashbacks and expanded storylines intermixed and interwoven with book one material for season one. As we keep getting casting information, and especially once the show is up and filming again. I think we'll keep being able to put a lot of these things together. Maybe we'll get those last two episode titles. I'm going to keep adding to the speculation. And at some point, I might be able to give you a more firm guess about 
what we might see in each of the eight episodes. In the meantime, make sure you are subscribed for more casting videos, more speculation videos, more spoiler-filled reread videos, and any other Wheel of Time content you could ask for. I'll see you next time.